Planes, Trains and Automobiles is a 1987 American comedy film written, produced, and directed by John Hughes. The film stars Steve Martin as Neil Page, a high-strung marketing executive, who meets Del Griffith, played by John Candy, an eternally optimistic, outgoing, overly talkative, and clumsy shower curtain ring salesman. They share a three-day odyssey of misadventures trying to get Neil home to Chicago from New York City in time for Thanksgiving with his family. Topic. Plot Neil Page is an advertising executive on a business trip in New York City eager to return to his family in Chicago for Thanksgiving. After participating in a tedious meeting that ends without a decision, Neil unsuccessfully attempts to hail a cab during rush hour. He is further delayed after paying a greedy attorney for a cab that is inadvertently stolen by Del Griffith, a loquacious traveling salesman who sells shower curtain rings. Neil and Dell cross paths again at LaGuardia Airport, where they board a plane to O'Hare. Their plane is diverted to Wichita due to a blizzard in Chicago. Neil, realizing that he has to spend the night in Wichita, agrees to accompany Dell to a cheap motel. During the night, Neil loses his temper with Dell and lambasts him. In response, Dell admits that he regards Neil as a cold cynic and says that despite how Neil feels, he likes himself and his wife and customers like him. Neil calms down and the two men go to sleep. During the night their cash is stolen by a burglar. The following day they attempt to reach Chicago by train. The two, much to Neil's relief, part ways, but the locomotive breaks down, leaving the passengers stranded in a Missouri field. After reaching Jefferson City, Dell sells his remaining shower curtain rings to buy bus tickets, but neglects to tell Neil that they are only valid to St. Louis. Upon arrival, Neil inadvertently offends Dell over lunch and the two part ways again. Neil attempts to rent a car, but finds the space at the distant rental lot empty. After walking all the way back to the airport terminal, Neil vents his anger at the rental agent to no avail. In desperation, he attempts to hail a taxi to Chicago, but insults the dispatcher, who then attacks Neil. By chance, Dell shows up again, arriving just in time to rescue Neil with his own rental car. While driving, they find themselves arguing again. The situation is made worse when Dell nearly gets them killed on a freeway after driving in the wrong direction, scraping between two semi-trailer trucks. While they take a moment to compose themselves by the side of the road, Dell's carelessly discarded cigarette sets fire to the rental car's interior. Neil initially gloats over Dell's predicament, thinking that he is liable for the damage to the car. Neil's amusement turns to anger when Dell reveals he used Neil's credit card to rent the car after their cards were accidentally switched. With his credit cards destroyed in the car fire, Neil sells his designer watch to a motel clerk to pay for a room for himself. Dell is broke and attempts to sleep in the car, which has lost its roof in the fire. Neil eventually feels sympathy for Dell and invites him in from the cold and snowy night. Neil relaxes as the two consume Dell's collection of airline liquors and laugh about the events of the past two days. The pair resume driving to Chicago the next morning, but their badly damaged car is impounded by the police. They finally make it to Chicago, two days late, in the back of a refrigerator truck. The two finally part ways at the LaSalle, Van Buren CTA station. While riding the train, Neil remembers some of the cryptic comments Dell made about his wife during the journey and realizes that Dell may be alone for the holiday. Struck by compassion, he quickly returns to the station, sees Dell sitting by himself and asks why he has not gone home. Dell reveals that he does not have a home and that his wife died eight years earlier. Neil returns home to his family and introduces them to his friend Dell, whom he has invited to Thanksgiving. Topic: Cast. Topic: Production. Much of the film was filmed in Batavia, New York, and South Dayton, New York. Topic reception The film marked a widely noticed change in the repertoire of John Hughes. It was greeted with critical acclaim upon release, a revelation in that Hughes was considered a teen angst filmmaker. It also got two thumbs up from Siskel and Ebert, with Siskel declaring it John Candy's best role to date. It has 93% positive ratings on Rotten Tomatoes and is featured in Roger Ebert's Great Movies collection. 
Ebert said the movie was perfectly cast and soundly constructed. Casey Birchby of DVD Talk said John Hughes, like a lot of other filmmakers who specialized in comedy during the 1980s, knew how to explore a varied range of tones in crafting a full bodied movie that went well beyond the one note comedies that are par for the course. Hughes took comedy subgenre such as the teen film, the buddy movie, the family comedy, and the road film, and boosted these flattened out, cliche bound stories with robust characters capable of generating believably absurd cinematic situations. Planes, trains, and automobiles displays Hughes' powers at their height, as well as Steve Martin and John Candy in two of their very best roles. While some reviewers were critical of the gushy tones and silliness seen in the movie, which affected the ability to convey emotional range, most applauded the humor itself. Leonard Maltin called the movie a bittersweet farce, adding that Hughes refuses to make either one Martin or Candy a caricature, which keeps this amiable film teetering between slapstick shenanigans and compassionate comedy. Maltin added that the movie was hurt by an awful music score. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Box office. The movie opened in American theaters on November 25, 1987, a Wednesday, and finished third for the weekend, grossing $7,009,482. After its first five days, the film grossed $10,131,242 and stayed in the top ten for seven weeks. The movie finished its American run on January 22, 1988 with $49,530,280 after a 12-week run. The production budget was almost $30 million. Topic soundtrack The soundtrack to Planes, Trains and Automobiles features a mix of rock and roll, country and pop. The frenetic musical score by Ira Newborn makes extensive use of the folk song Red River Valley, including a rock and roll version of the song Red River Rock, performed by British group Silicon Teens. Among other tracks is a cover version of Back in Baby's Arms. The song, popularized by Patsy Cline, is performed by Emmy Lou Harris. Another popular song used in the movie is Mess Around written by Ahmet Ertegun and performed by Ray Charles. The soundtrack album was released in 1987, but has since gone out of print. It is currently available for download on iTunes. Or is available on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> 